Hello and welcome to Geek Knows. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make a simple car animation in Blender. So first of all, let's see the animation we're going to make. First, you want to go on to CG Trader, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get it, and download this Mercedes car. It's completely free, and it's really good. Now, you want to open Blender. And then open the file. So here is the car in Blender. So we don't need any of this. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to delete the backdrop. I'm going to delete the camera for now. Delete the light, I don't think there's any more lights, there's one there, delete that as well. So now we have this, as you can see, it does move as one. We can delete the right instance, we don't need that there, because it won't move with the car. There we go. So what we want to do now is, we want to add a plane. So go into the top view by pressing the Z here. Press Shift A, plane, and then press G to move it over, and press S to scale. S and then press Y to scale on the Y axis and then keep it there like this. Now come down to materials. You need to add the polygon material converter add on for this. Or I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get that. So I'm going to use the metal stainless steel. So load and apply. Now, the first time you go into sealed of the materials in the material preview, it's going to lag because it's going to load in all of the material previews for this car. So I'll just press it now. It may take a while on your computer, depending on your specs. That was very quick and instant. Normally it's not that quick, so just be careful. All right, so now we've got this. If you click on the, the rig here and press Control tab we go into pose mode. Click on here. I'm going to press on this one here so I can move it across. Straighten the front wheels, so the front wheels are all straight now, which is perfect. Now we want to actually start animating this. So first of all, let's add a camera. So we press Shift and then right click there just to put our 3D cursor there. Press Shift A. Oh, sorry. Press Control Tab, Shift A, and then find the camera. So now we have the camera. We want to bring it outwards. And put it in front so let's just change everything so bring that to like zero degrees bring the camera back a little bit bring it up a bit on the x-axis with rotation we want to keep it quite central that's fairly central you can change this around for how you want to have it your personal preference so now let's set up our render settings so i'm going to be using cycles because um, cycles is better. I do not know how to do it with EV rendering because it's completely different. I don't know if the car supports it. So we're going to be using cycles. For this animation, I'm going to put motion blur on because motion blur is good for this kind of thing. And for the viewport, 32 samples, it sounds good. And then, yeah, 828 for the actual render. That is perfectly fine. So for resolution, I'm going to change it to 2560 by 1080. This is to get a more cinematic aspect ratio. So now let's bring this back a little bit to adapt to this new resolution. Perfect. Now what we want to do is we want to make it so the headlights go on and off. So if we click on the render view right now, we can see that the headlights should be illuminated. Yes, they are. So. We're going to start in a completely dark environment. So for this, we go to shading step, click on here, go to world, change it to completely black. Now we go back onto object, click on the headlights, and as we can see, the white color is here. So if we change this to the darker color, so to black, as you can see, they do not illuminate. And then when we turn it up to white, they illuminate. Perfect. So we animate that in a second, but I just want to make sure that the, the steel background covers all of the camera, otherwise it does not look right. So press S and then X to scale along there. Make sure the corners are outside of the view of the camera. Perfect. 
Now let's start animating. To animate the, the light easier, we're gonna go into shadings, sorry, animation. Click on this bit here, and then go down to the shadings tab. One second, let me find it. Shader editor, yeah, shader editor. Now we can see whatever we click on. So I'm gonna click on the headlights. We're gonna set them to fully black there and then make sure you're in frame one and click I whilst hovering over here. So we press I and then move forward to let's just say 40 frames and then set it to white and then press I again. And now we've keyframed it. As you can see, when you move along the timeline, it increases the color or makes it brighter and it makes it darker. Let's do this with the rear headlights or brake lights. Go to frame one, set them to completely dark, press I to keyframe. And now we want to make it so the camera switches. So we have to keyframe them again at 40 when the other one ends. And then let's set it to just put the, um, the end of the timeline a bit further so we can change it. So we keyframed at 40. So now we want to go a bit further. Let's just do 75 and set it to completely white. Then press I to keyframe. So if we go on the camera on the front view now, go to frame one. As we can see, the headlights go on slowly. Now let's add a separate camera for the rear. So we want to press Shift D to duplicate. Bring it over here. Press R Z 180. Rotate it around. Bring it backwards. Now go to frame one and press M to add a marker. Click on this camera, the first one, click Control B. Sorry, not Control B. Marker. Where is it? Marker. Camera. Yeah, bind camera to marker. Go to this one, frame 40, press M and then Control B. And now you should see them swap. Perfect. Let's just move this camera around so it fits better. Lovely. So we play that back now. We should have a nice um, animation of the headlights and the brake lights. Excellent. So if we go to about frame 85 and then press add marker, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a third camera on the side here. So we can do the, the shot of the light going over the car. So click on the camera you want to duplicate. Press Shift D. And then we're going to press Shift D, sorry. And then G to move over here. R, Z, minus 90. And then bring it to the side profile. Just line it up better. Control B, make sure your cursor is down here. Click on the camera. And then that, let's line this up properly. Let's just extend the base plate a bit more. Maybe make the camera a little bit higher. Let's click on the camera. That looks fine. I'm going to make sure these corners are out of view of the camera as well. Lovely. Let's add our light in. So shift click, so shift right click here, shift A, light, add an area, scale it along this axis, make it quite thin. And then we're going to go down here to light and then set it to zero. Press I to keyframe, press I so we can keyframe the location. Come along to 105, move it to the middle, press I and then come over here and set it to 100 and press I. So now if we set this one down here to zero, you can see it increases the wattage. And then when we're going to go back out again, we're going to make it decrease. So go to 125, move it off camera. So the first one was about two widths apart. So we'll do the same for 125. 135, sorry. Is it 135? 125. So move it to about there and press I and then set this to zero and press I again. As you can see, it now moves over. 
So we go into the side view, go into the rendered view. It should go over the car, but we don't want this because this just looks weird. So what we want to do is we want to go to multiple importances and turn that off. So now, if you have that enabled, it looks really, really odd. So what we want to do is we want to make this a bit higher so it's above the car. So go to the keyframe you have that, bring it to about there, press I to add the keyframe, jump to the next one by pressing the up arrow key, bring up again to about there, press I, and then press the up arrow key again, and bring it to about there, and press I, there we go, as you can see, it goes over the car. Perfect. Let's move on to the next part now, where the car drives away. So let's go back to the rear marker. So we'll press M to add a marker. So the rear camera, sorry. Click on the camera, come down here, press Control B, and now we're back at the other camera. So now we're going to animate the car driving off, and then do it, the camera doing a spin as a transition to the next um, render. For this, we're going to animate the car. So click on the car, and then we're going to go on to here, press I, it's a keyframe the location, and how many frames should we move ahead? Let's go to 170, and bring it forward to about there, should we say? So let's just watch that back, is that too quick? No, that's fine. Or is it a little bit too far away? Let's change it. So we go to the top, click on the car, make sure you're at frame 170, move it forward a bit. Oh, sorry. Make sure you click on the rig, move it backwards. It's about there. And then press I. So that should move properly now. I'm not sure what this is here. I don't think we need it though for now. All right, so that should move accordingly. Perfect. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Excellent. So now we want to make it do the spin on the camera. So let's line this up. So let's do 140. Go over to the rotation. Make sure you're on the camera. Press I. And go to 170 when it stops. And let's just say... Should we do about there, so minus 100, so that way it goes around like that. And that's it. Let's make this a bit more in the middle though. So let's keyframe the location, so like there or something. And make sure this in the middle here as well. Let's move it over a little bit, so about there. Perfect. So it looks all good. Maybe this front one needs aligning a little bit more. So for this, we'll just move it over a little bit. Let's just say there. That looks fine. You don't have to keyframe that. I didn't mean to keyframe that. We can just delete that keyframe. But that looks fine to me. Excellent. So now you want to end your render at 170. And that's done for the first render. So, excellent. You want to set this off for a render. So, render animation. You know what to do. Just click on there for render animation. Make sure you've got your output where you want to. So, I've just got mine to this file here. Uh, make sure it's 2560 by 1080. And then um, 128. And then firm denoise. If you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, I'd use an OptiX denoiser. If you're not, then you're going to have to use the open image one. So, I'll leave this to render. And then we'll move on to part two.